Nice shooter! We had over 125 guns in the truck, both replicas and live guns. So I think people will be pleased. We have some very nice weapons in this movie. This Punisher makes very bold statements with guns. The guns are basically an extension of him. He is the weapon. And your weaponry comes down from long range, right down to short range, to knives and hand to hand, and ultimately you are. It's really gonna pay homage to the fans of this series that want to see the Punisher creating mass carnage. You know, that's what they want. That's what I wanted. What do you want? Brought you some treats. On the table, you've got everything. I've got the Punisher's gun, and the other guns are mostly bad guys and uh, general uh, thug guns that uh, we're distributing depending on what they need for the scene. At the Cesare Mansion, he's got two MP5K, which are the shortest version of the MP5, which is a 9mm submachine gun. There's normally a handle up front. We took it off, and we just cut a few pieces to make him look more like handgun. We chose these guns because they hold 30 rounds each, uh, and it's full auto. They, they, they have a fast cycling rig, so the flame on, on front is, in the front is really nice. He's got two Berettas full auto, and he's got another Eklund Cock 45. That's a very graphic scene. Lots of gunfire, shells falling off in a rainbow pattern. It's just a lot of people get killed in a very short amount of time, and I think that kind of sets us onto the journey. Cut! Next big gun we have here is uh, the Punisher's M4. He uses that mainly when he's at the hotel. The M4 is a standard US military platform. This one's got a 10-inch barrel instead of a 14-inch barrel. It's got a quick detachable silencer. It's got a fake grenade launcher. On top, he's got an electronic sight. With the M4, he has two full auto Berettas, which are the handgun that the army used that we modified in order to turn it into machine guns, so he gets more firepower out of it. This sequence is the reverse of the guy getting shot as he came up the staircase. He has to get from point A to point B and kill as many people as he can with a little bit of ammunition. And what we've done is we've succinctly worked in ammo resupply points where he has to reload his weapon. As we move this hallway forward, there should be, at the end of the day, 78 dead bodies. Oh, for fuck's sake! When we see him at the hotel for the final scene, the Heckler and Cog 45 is gone, and it's replaced by this custom uh, Smith & Wesson 500. It's the most powerful handgun on the market right now. It's got a silencer on, uh, an optical sight, and a laser sight. The other stuff is all basically guns that will be giving out two different fractions of the crime gangs of the city. So when we were dealing with Russians, we went mostly with AK-47 and our Russian-based weapons, like little scorpion that you see often in terrorist sand. When we went with Asians, we used mostly high-tech European guns like Eckler and & Koch and pistols like the Walter, which are more modern. The Irish will be a little mismatched, and I think the Arlem will have mostly stainless steel and shiny guns, just to make a difference between the different factions. You get this. Ray Stevens, I can't talk enough about the guy. The guy's fantastic. We started shooting, and I've been around firearms my entire life, and it took me a while to learn and to get good at it. Ray picks the damn weapon up and immediately starts putting rounds into the paper targets we had set up, and all of his shots were where they needed to be, and I'm like, well, we can skip all the basics. <laughs> we can just move right to the playtime. We wanted to see that he could use one gun, put it to the side, pull two more, put them to the side, pull two more. So it's like this never-ending evolution of weapons, but would exist in real life. It's fundamental stuff, but you've got to drum in the basics. And we're trying to obviously get it up to speed so that anybody watching who's got a military background will know straight away that we're not faking it. The action sequences are, are going to be thrilling and exciting and so much hard work, but they're going to be so rewarding. The reason you're doing it is to finally get on set and have the guys shoot at each other and see blood splattering and uh, see the result. So to me, that's the fun part of it. Hey, blood's always nice. This is just the beginning.